Abducens nerve is the sixth cranial nerve. It originates in the pons and innervates the lateral rectus muscle. The lateral rectus muscle in turn abducts the eye. Lesions of the abducens nerve therefore cause double vision, what we call diplopia, by paralyzing the lateral rectus muscle. So for instance, if you ask a person to look to the right side and this person has a paralyzed right lateral rectus muscle, the person will experience double vision uh, and the images will be horizontal to each other. So anytime a person presents with diplopia, one question to ask the patient is whether it's vertical diplopia, meaning one image is on top of the other image, or it's a lateral diplopia where one muscle, uh, when, where the images are side by side. So if a diplopia is side by side, you suspect either it's a lateral rectus muscle or the medial rectus muscle. In the next few minutes, I will demonstrate an approximate course of the abducens nerve and give you some idea how to localize a lesion in the course of the abducens nerve. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll tr I'll try to draw the figure for you. So let's. So let's say this is the brain stem. So you have the midbrain, you have the pons, and you have the medulla. I will draw draw the clivus bone here. So let's do that. So you have the clivus bone here. You have some more bony support here. We'll draw the eyeball. So the eyeball is right here. And I'll use a different color sh to show the pupil. So let's let's draw the pupil here. So let's say this is the pupil here. And we'll go back to the brown color to draw some more bone. Let's suppose this is the common tendinous ring and you have the superior orbital fissure here. Okay. We'll draw the internal carotid artery. So internal carotid artery is in the cavernous sinus. So you have the internal carotid artery that comes through the carotid canal passes superficial to the foramen lastrum and you see the these are just approximations we will draw the posterior clinoid ligament here so this is sorry the posterior clinoid process is here you have the lateral rectus muscle so let's draw that one here so you have the lateral rectus muscle here. So lateral rectus muscle is the muscle that abducts the eye. And I think we have basically all the players here. So let's draw the uh, sixth cranial nerve. So this is the nucleus of the sixth cranial nerve is in the pons, in the posterior part of the pons. So it is right here. One thing to remember is the seventh cranial nerve goes and winds around the sixth cranial nerve. So this is the seventh cranial nerve. It goes and makes a loop around the sixth cranial nerve before it exits. Okay. In the back of the, behind the pons, you have the cerebellum. So let's draw the cerebellum here. So the cerebellum is right there. And now let's draw the sixth cranial nerve. So the sixth cranial nerve, you see the nucleus right there. It moves anteriorly and inferiorly and leaves the brain stem at the junction of the pons and the medulla. And then it starts going on the clivus bone, which is right in front of it, anterior to it. Starts climbing the clivus bone. At this point, it is underneath a sheath of dura mater, which is called the Dorillus canal. 
it then pierces just medial to the Gruber's ligament which I will draw just in a second it pierces the dura and enters the cavernous sinus and in the cavernous sinus it stays lateral through the internal carotid artery it then enters the orbital goes through the superior orbital fissure through the common tendinous ring it enters the orbit and then it supplies the lateral rectus muscle right there so let me draw uh, draw some ligaments I'll just use gray color for that so first I will draw the Dorelos canal so this is a sheath of dura matter that surrounds the that surrounds the sixth cranial nerve as it's climbing up the clivus bone then we have another tendon that con connects the petrous temporal so petrous temporal to the clinoid process here you have the clivus but just lateral to it you have the petrous temporal not seen on this particular section but this ligament basically connects the petri this is called the petroclinoid ligament because it's connecting with the petrous bone and the posterior clinoid process it's also called the Gruber ligament now we've basically identify all, identified all the players that are there so let's take one thing at a time so I'm going to use a purple color to demonstrate the different lesions so if there is a lesion in the posterior fossa that is pressing on the brain stem uh, let me just change the color sorry there so something that is pressing on the brain stem on bonds right here it will cause a sixth nerve and a seventh nerve palsy so the combination of sixth nerve and seventh nerve palsy should raise the possibility of involvement of the pons if there is a lesion that is very anterior as the sixth nerve is exiting the pons often the seventh nerve may also be involved and if that is the case the patient may get a sixth nerve palsy and a seventh nerve palsy so both lower motor neuron type and contralateral hemiparesis once the sixth nerve exits the pons this area so this area right here between the pons and the clivus and as it's climbing up the clivus and on the edge of the petrous temporal bone where it enters the cavernous sinus this area is very susceptible to herniation or increased intracranial pressure so if there is an increased intracranial pressure the brain stem gets displaced downwards so it gets displaced downwards and that in turn stretches the sixth nerve over here and on the edge of the petrous temporal bone and that is the reason that patients who have pseudotumor cerebri or those who have increased intracranial pressure develop sixth nerve palsies bilaterally it is often called a false localizing sign but you know if you know the anatomy it is not that false you know you have a pretty good idea where that sixth nerve is being compressed now any pathology in the that affects the base of the brain such as meningitis uh, tuberculous meningitis sarcoidosis carcinomatous meningitis that or any other infiltrative process can affect that part of the sixth nerve and cause a sixth nerve palsy I mean in that case six other nerves that are emerging from the brainstem can also get involved so you can have a multiple cranial neuropathy for because of those infiltrating processes if there is any pathology in the cavernous sinus so let me draw a cavernous sinus here so let's say that this is a cavernous sinus right here so we've drawn the cavernous sinus sixth nerve lies within the cavernous sinus so this is the only cranial nerve that is inside this room of cavernous sinus the third nerve fourth nerve V1 and V2 are in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus so if there is a granul granulomatous condition involving the cavernous sinus it will affect the internal carotid artery and will affect the sixth nerve at the same time if you have uh, the carot carotid artery has a sympathetic plexus on top of it so if you have a Horner syndrome plus sixth nerve palsy you can suspect a possible involvement of the 
cavernous sinus. Now the lesion can be, there, can, there are many different lesions that can cause cranial nerve 6 paralysis. So one of the most common ones is ischemia. So if a patient has ischemia such as diabetics, it can cause 6th nerve palsy. So ischemia of the 6th nerve can cause a palsy. Uh, infiltrative processes or any tumors in anywhere in the course of the 6th nerve can potentially cause a problem. And if somebody has any kind of a trauma, so trauma if it leads to a lesion of the 6th nerve at the petrous temporal, it can cause a 6th nerve palsy. So I think for now it will suffice. It's important that you memorize the course of the 6th nerve because it was very helpful in identifying the lesions. Now one more thing that I just forgot which I should add right now. If a person has problems with petrous temporal bone, any infections of the petrous temporal bone, keep in mind that the petrous temporal bone houses the cranial nerve 7th and 8th. So if somebody has a cranial nerve 7th palsy and a cranial nerve 8th palsy and is now has a 6th nerve palsy, that can be part of an infection or inflammation of the petrous temporal bone. And appropriate uh, imaging of that area will help you identify a potential lesion. Thank you very much. That's for it now. And I will see you in a future tutorial. Thank you.